Hello, I'm Nigel Saunders, and you're about to enter the Bonsai Zone. I'm going to start today by doing a quick review of watering cans. This is my collection of watering cans. I'm going to demonstrate each watering can and see the pros and cons of each size and style. I'll start with the largest 5 liter Haas Conservatory can. I'm at the watering hole here. I'll fill up the 5 liter watering can first. This watering can can be very heavy, carrying it from your water barrels to your bonsai benches. And then if you have to lift it up to water, you get a good arm workout. Once the flow gets started, it puts out a really nice, gentle spray of water that covers a lot of area. So it's really good for watering your trees, the top of your trees, and the surface of your soil but it doesn't last long you'll find five liters drains out fairly quickly because of the weight of this can when it's full and the amount of water that you use fairly quickly and the lack of precision when you're watering I wouldn't recommend this can as your main watering can for your bonsai benches the next can I'm going to test is the Haas conservatory two liter watering can this is the main watering can I use on my bonsai trees. This two liter size is nice and lightweight to carry to your bonsai benches. The two liter size is small enough to get in and water just certain areas of your pot if you want. You can get behind trees, hard to reach places, and the water flow is quite adequate. If you want to give it a good soaking, you have to wait a little while. But it's not too bad. It's a nice fine spray and really good for bone size. This is my main watering can. I've used this for 25 years and I really like it. The next size down is the one liter watering can. So let's give it a try. You can see the pressure isn't as much because the neck is shorter. And the spray pattern isn't quite as nice. It's, uh, you know, it covers a large area. It doesn't really get a lot of water out. Yeah, it's not really that suitable for bonsai. If the spray pattern was more precise in a smaller circle, it would be great for indoor trees and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it just kind of sprays out in a big pattern. Not much pressure. Very little water flow and it's just not really suitable for watering bonsai trees. I'm going to test the smallest one now which is half a liter. It's the smallest one I have and let's see how it goes. So you can see it's actually better than the one liter one. The spray is more concentrated, it has a fairly good water flow and is actually more suitable for indoor bonsai and little tiny tiny pots and tiny bonsai. So it's not too bad. I, uh, I like the smallest one, half a liter, more than the one liter for doing really tiny precision work. Yeah, so I kind of like that one. Next up is the Haas Copper Conservatory can. Let's give that a try. The first thing you'll notice about the copper watering cans is how cold they are. They uh, aren't insulated like the plastic ones on your hands. So you can feel the temperature of the water just by picking the can up. Let's try out the copper one now. So you can see it has a very low velocity spray. It covers a sort of a medium pattern and it's very very gentle the uh, the water that comes out. It takes a long time to drain even this small size can. So very fine fine spray. I mainly use this can for misting inside the greenhouse on a hot day just to miss the top of the plants to cool them down. The last one I'll be testing is my bottle top watering system. It just screws onto a two liter pop bottle. You just buy these little caps. I'll fill it up. It doesn't have a handle or anything so you gotta kinda stick your hand in the water. And it takes a while to fill up the two liter pop bottle. So here we go. So the two liter, you can really, it's really precise. 
you can turn it on and off really easy just by squeezing the bottle. You can get into little small areas. It's quite good for indoor trees, little tiny bone size, and precision watering. I'd highly recommend it for indoors. You don't make a mess, it's very controllable. These plastic watering cans will last a long time. My first one of these lasted me 17 years and I did keep it out of the sunlight to preserve the plastic. I'm finished testing all my watering cans. So this is the main one I use for probably 95% of my watering. Second, I would say I use the bottle cap watering system, the second most in the winter time indoors. Next up on the bonsai zone, do you remember quite a while ago I planted a money tree cutting in this pot, spread the roots out nice and radially, and I've let it grow since then. Let's have a look and see how it's grown. Here it is today. It's grown really tall and it's thickening up quite a bit. When I planted it as a cutting, it had a really meager root system. But now you can see there's a really large surface root here and the tree is really firmly anchored into the pot. It doesn't wiggle at all. So that pot is just full of roots. I've been letting a lot of my trees grow wild this summer, building up the thickness of the trunks, building up the roots and increasing the vigor in the tree. I can't fit them back in the plant room when I've got these great big tall trees like this, so I'm going to have to reduce this tree down in height. With this tree I have a couple of choices. I can keep the two branches Branching is difficult to get in these this species. Or if I want taper, I could remove this thickest trunk and have it taper from thick to very thin. So I have to decide what style I want this tree in. I'm not a fan of having extreme taper in my bonsai trunks. I like my trees to look natural. If I remove this thickest trunk, I would have quite extreme taper in the trunk, going from thick to very thin. It would be Interesting, but not very natural looking. I want to keep both my upright trunks, so I'll prune my thicker trunk, this one, or branch, off shorter, and I'll leave the slender one longer. So they'll kind of balance each other eventually. For this operation, I'll use my bypass pruners, and I've got to decide on how high I want to cut this trunk off to. So if this is my height, to my first division, where it divides from one into two, I'll want my next division shorter. So maybe down to here. So this is a Hail Mary cut. We'll see what happens. So here I go. There we go. My second trunk I don't want it at the exact same height. I was going to grow it a little taller. So I'm going to prune it off to the green area right up here. There we go. That might be the new front of the tree here. It's a little cleaner, this line. I'll try planting the money tree cuttings and see how they grow. This tree was planted a little deep in the soil, so I'm going to comb off the surface layer of soil and see what our root base is doing. I won't repot the tree right now. I'm going to wait till the top starts growing again. And once I get some green leaves on top, I'll repot the tree in the winter time in the plant room. And we'll sort out all these roots and get them balanced and nice and radial in an effort to get a nice fluted trunk eventually. That's all the work I'll be doing on the money tree for today, so on to the next tree. Next up is my medium leaf ficus benjamina. This tree got damaged in a cold spell and the whole top of the tree died. So I took a cutting off the tree and planted the cutting back on top of the old stump of the tree and I'm growing the roots down the old trunk, alongside the old trunk, trying to make a sort of a fusion tree out of it to restore the tree back to its former glory, I guess. Here's a close-up shot of the cutting, which is up here, and it's, the roots are draped over the old trunk, which is down below here. And the cutting is really firm on the trunk now. I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle, 
but not very much. So I think it's safe to remove all these collars now and see what the roots are doing. These collars were put on to allow the roots to grow down into the original soil in the pot here and allow me to get in here and water the soil that's surrounding the roots. So I'm sure all these roots have grown down into the pot now, so I'm going to start removing these collars. I'll cut away the rubber band holding it in place first. That's just part of an old bicycle inner tube. And now I can peel away the tin foil, which is doubled up for strength. I can see a lot of roots growing in around the tin foil here. It's time now to remove the bottom collar. I'll remove all the rocks holding the bottom of the collar in place. This will certainly make the pot a lot lighter. And then I'll remove the bottom collar. And just like that, and a weed. Next I'll start combing out this soil to see what roots we have. If I'm not happy with the roots, I can always reapply a new collar and let it grow longer. The roots I'm concerned about are the major roots, not these little tiny fine ones. I want a lot of fairly thick roots gripping the old trunk. I'm just cleaning it up to see what we have. Coming out these roots. There's a view of the root base now. I'm going to give it a watering and uh, just wash a little more of that soil off and then we'll see what condition the roots are in. So here I go with the water. Here's a shot of the tree from the distance. I've got no complaints about the roots. I really like it. It looks very, very much like a banyan tree with all those aerial roots going down the trunk. And the top, the new cutting, integrates fairly well. I think as those roots slowly start to get bark, they'll uh, blend in better. So I think it was a success. I, uh, I'm happy with the results. I'm going to wrap the trunk up in plastic and put it in the greenhouse for the rest of the summer. Try and keep all those roots alive. I'll keep them misted and uh, the humidity in there should really help them grow and fuse together. Yeah, so I think we're done with the collars and I'll switch to plastic now. I'm going to use a clear plastic bag and cut it into strips so I can see the roots underneath the plastic. I'll cut it about this wide. I'm reusing a plastic bag. I'm not creating new plastic in the world. So I've got a strip and I'll make a cut across. Just like that. So now I have a long strip of plastic that I can wrap around the roots of the tree. It's very similar to the tin foil, except I can see what's going on underneath the plastic. So here I go with the wrapping. We'll see how this goes. I'll cut some more strips and put it around the base here also. So let's get this positioned here. Around the base of the tree. And I'll wrap it around here. I'll get my rocks and hold the plastic back in place. The planting will have to be heavier for a while longer. Even the rooster agrees. To hold the plastic in place at the top, I'll just tie a really loose bow. I don't want to use string or anything, or it might dig into the roots. So just like that.
and I can still water through the top here. This project has taken a lot of patience, but we're getting closer and closer to the final goal of restoring this tree to look beautiful or even better than it did before. That's all the work I'll be doing on my medium leaf ficus benjamina. So now it's time for today's update. Today's update is my root over rock Scots pine bonsai. In the last video on this tree, I planted the pine over top of this limestone rock and spread the roots out so they grow down into the soil in the bottom of the pot. The tree's been doing really well. The only problem I had was birds were kicking the moss off the tree. So I moved the tree to a different location on a different bench that was kind of more protected with trees around it and it hasn't been a problem with the birds since. But there is some chunks of moss missing around these roots. But that's okay, the roots are growing into the soil already, so there's no harm done. At the top of the tree, I did a lot of pruning to try and get this to be sort of a flat top, windblown style. In the areas where I hard pruned the branch back to some green foliage, I have a lot of new buds growing around the cut point. I've got one, two, three, four on this particular tip. So that technique worked really well, pruning it back shorter. Some of them I just pinched the candles and they're doing well too. So there's all kinds of new buds for next year on the top of this tree. I think this little tree is gonna look really good someday with its flat top on top of its limestone rock with its roots exposed and in a nice pot, but that'll be for the future. It's time now for today's viewers picks. These are picks sent in by the viewers to the email address in the description below. Today's pictures are from Victor. He has a Chinese tallow tree. He has a flambolin from Puerto Rico tree. And he's got a Schilling's Yapon holly tree. And the fourth one, not sure what it is, but it's gonna be a small bonsai tree. So thanks, Victor. That's all the work I'll be doing today. Be sure to check out the playlist tab on the channel main page and check tree documentaries. I keep adding more and more documentaries to this list every day and they're really fascinating if you love trees. Thanks for watching. I'm Nigel Saunders in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>